Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. I uh, want to have a quick chat about oxalic acid and its proper uses. Um, some of you may or may not agree with me on what I'm about to say, but I feel like it needs to be said, so stick right with me. All right, oxalic acid. It's a great treatment for varroa mite. Um, there are some limitations to the use of oxalic acid, and I think maybe that's where we fall a little short on our research or education or whatever you want to call it on knowing when and where we should be using oxalic acid. So, I, so kind of the reason um, wanting to put out this video is. <clears throat> I continue to get phone calls uh, asking me about issues with the bees in the fall. Um, I continue to see posts on Facebook or Instagram or whatever um, social media platform it may be uh, that there are uh, they're having issues with their with their bees, and they show me a frame of brood, and it's all spotty, and we have diseases and dead brood. We have you know small clusters, and here we are. This is October, so. You know, small cluster now, it's it's getting difficult to recover that in time for winter. <clears throat> so, a lot of times when we go to asking questions, it's like, all right, did you do anything for varroa mite? And they're like, yes, we treated for we treated for varroa mite. What did you use? Oxalic acid. Well, how did you treat with oxalic acid? That's kind of my next question. Did you check for did you check your mite counts when you got done treating? You know, two to three, four weeks later, did you recheck and see what your varroa mite counts were? Uh, you know, eight out of ten times, no, we didn't we didn't check. But we gave them oxalic acid, so we we we've taken care of the issues, right? So oxalic acid, trademarked if you use the the legal version of oxalic acid. I know they're you know, you can there are people that use the, the wood bleach versions or something like that. Um, understand it's the same chemical and all that good stuff. But um, this video, we're going to focus on the trademark registered version, which is um, apoboxyl. Um, and that was the original version. It was originally, uh, I believe, trademarked with, um, with Brushy Mountain Bee Farm, but now it's, you know, it's spread out now. Um, <clears throat> regardless, that is... That's what we can use. So oxalic acid, and it plainly states it on the label. If we read the label, so if, if we're applying a pesticide, we need to be reading the label on the chemical that we're applying. It doesn't matter if we're spraying Roundup on our yard or we're putting a treatment on our bees. It's all a pesticide, all right? So we need to be reading the label. So if we read the label of oxalic acid, it plainly states on there it does not penetrate wax. And so with that said, what's a what's a... What's a pupa stage uh, uh, honeybee? It's got a wax covering on it. So the oxalic acid does not penetrate the wax. In addition, the oxalic acid has, if you read down a little further, what it talks about honey, um, you know, treating with honey on or honey off, it says treat with when there is not any honey supers on, but the period on which you can put honey supers back on is only one day. So. That tells you right there that there is no residual effect of the oxalic acid in the hive. So, if we're treating for varroa mite, I mean, this is this is not an exact number, but chances are 90% or more of the varroa mite are inside of the cells of the pupating bees or, or under a larva that's about to be uh, that's about to be capped over. So. <clears throat> the remaining few percent are they're outside on the backs of those bees in that phoratic stage. So when we apply oxalic acid to that colony of honeybees, whether we use the drizzle method, whether we use the vaporizers, whatever method we choose to use, when we apply that, that oxalic acid to that hive, it only works, you know, for a period of a few hours more than likely that it's within that hive and it's actively killing varroa mite. 
So if you have some kind of method, you know, a sticky board or something at the bottom, you may see a pretty good count, a pretty good mic drop, right? And, that, and all that is those phreatic mics. But like I said, <clears throat> probably 90% of your varroa mite are behind that cell capping or at least under a larva. Um, so it may or may not get those under the larva, but they're, they're still not reaching those in the pupa stage, which is several days of a honeybee's life, right? Um, so that's, that can be a lot of varroa mite that we're not reaching. And the next day that oxalic acid is still not killing those varroa mites. So if you go into that hive and you treat with oxalic acid, you've maybe effectively killed maybe 10% of the mites in that hive. That's not an effective kill. So <clears throat> there are a lot of different other methods where we're leaving a particular chemical or something like that on the hive for an extended amount of time. Like, um, for example, like an apivar, it's a 42 day treatment. And the reason it's a 42 day treatment is that's two full complete brood cycles, 21 days. Um, so we're getting that hatch, kill, hatch, kill, hatch, kill, hatch, kill, right? Um, so it's, it's taking care of those mites. Now let me back up. I'm not saying use apivar. That, that's, that's not the intent uh, of this conversation. I'm saying the issue with oxalic acid is it does not penetrate that brood capping. So the argument then is, well, I use a different method. I use uh, every five or every 10 days for five um, five different times. So I'll treat, I'll treat with oxalic acid every 10 days, five times. So I'm going to treat, wait 10 days, treat, wait 10 days, treat, wait 10 days, so on, five times. All right. So that may give somewhat of a kill. Um, it very well may work. Um, so if I read the label here, sociality and method of administration by trickling. All right. This is just one of the methods, of course. The treatment method should be made in a single administration. The dose required is five milliliters per seam of bees. The product should be administered using a syringe along the length of the seam of bees. Maximum doses, dosage is 50 milliliters per hive, up to two treatments per year, winter and or spring, summer season. So if we're treating five times over a period of 50 days, that's not an on-label treatment. So if that's what you choose to do, that's fine. Um, just you're not treating on label at that point. Um, and whether or not that works, it may work. It may not. Um, here, here's the key to it though. Oxalic acid is, and, and it states this on the label as well. It should be used when a hive is broodless or very low brood. So, and it even talks about this on the label. How do we, how do we see broodless? So it should be used in a winter or a, or on a, a package um, where there is no brood, of course, or in, in a uh, situation where we have introduced the broodlessness or maybe naturally or artificially, you know, Cajun and queen or something like that. Um, so there, there are some opportunities outside of winter where a hive could be broodless or very low brood, right? And it could be an effective treatment. Fall of the year, um, that that's kind of iffy unless there's something going on, you know, and, and another force of some sort that that causes that hive to be low brood. And so I'm not talking bad about oxalic acid. I think it's a fantastic chemical. It has to be properly used though, and I, and I find that we are not properly using it out here, and we're seeing hive failure because of it. So. How do I use oxalic acid? I'll just give some examples. So we have two important dates in, in the calendar year. One is June 21st, the first day of summer. Um, that is the longest day of the year. And I, and I feel, and, and all the textbooks kind of reference this as well, that the bees recognize that the days start decreasing after June 21st, and, and that's kind of a signal to begin prepping for winter. Um, and then the other, the other important date is December 21st, the first day of winter. Also the shortest day of the year. So post December 21st, that beehive or, you know, at or about, I mean, the, the bees don't see that, Hey, it was a one minute difference in a day. Um, but as the daylight hours start increasing, they start prepping themselves for spring. So if we lead up to that December 21st and at or about that date, that is, that should be, and 
that should be the lowest brood of the year absent of some other force as like queenlessness or something like that as far as just the the year of the bees that should be the lowest amount of brood they have i know not all winters the bees go broodless and they, they don't but they should have a low brood comparatively speaking to march or april or even august um so that's one of the times i use oxalic acid is at or about the winter solstice i think that's a great opportunity to use oxalic acid you can run through our hives really quickly find a day when when the bees are lightly clustered um we don't want them completely all about the hive but because i like the drizzle method preferably um because i can do that really fast and it's cheap and inexpensive um so the drizzle method works really good two-man operation i can do a hive in 30 seconds so but we don't want them so tightly clustered to where to where the uh, the syrup the syrup mixture kind of just runs off the side of them we want it to kind of penetrate the bees so that's one time i use it the other time is setting up nukes um when, when we're setting up nukes in the spring with queen cells if we wait till about 19 days after we have established that nuke um, there will be zero capped brood within that colony um so uh we we put a queen cell in you know the day after we put that that nuke together and by the time that queen starts laying again and she would actually have larva in that hive but no capped brood and all the existing cat brood would have been uh, hatched that's a great opportunity to use oxalic acid um so we can use oxalic acid on uh package bees if we were to buy package bees i'm giving you some other opportunities to use it if, we, if you order a package you want to give them a quick treatment um, to really knock down any of those phreatic mites hanging on those on that package of bees you could use an oxalic acid great opportunity um, if we have a uh, we could go in and cage our queens and cage them for a period of days and and um, and then go in once all the brood is uncapped um, we could we could then treat that hive with oxalic acid so uh, the big picture is is oxalic acid is a Oxalic acid is this um, this great opportunity that we can use, um, this great chemical that we can use. It's a naturally occurring chemical. Um, it's uh, you know oxalic acid is actually in honey um, at a much lower level than the concentration we're using, but it is there. Um, it, it's a great piece of the big IPM integrated management uh, integrated pest management strategies that we can use. That we can't use oxalic acid as this do all it will not effectively treat varroa mites all times of the year in all conditions and i think that's the misconception and that's the way it's been used somewhat it's not effective we have to use that as a piece you know one of the tools in our toolkit and whether we're using some other synthetic chemicals or whether we're going completely or you know uh, natural chemicals or you know whatever whatever methods you're using any of these methods we have to use more than one tool one tool does not do it all and and i think that's what's really important make sure that we're understanding the chemicals that we're using their efficacies and and their limitations and ensuring that we're using it correctly so that we don't go into the fall or late fall part of the year getting into winter trying to prep for winter and we have hives that are dying out before we even get to the end of october because we use a treatment method that was not effective. Um, that's my point. I think oxalic acid is a great, a great chemical. Just use it correctly. I appreciate you guys signing on today and, and watching this video. I hope, I hope I gave you a little bit of insight on the uses of oxalic acid. Um, we may talk a little in another video about some of the other treatment methods. I just wanted to kind of put that out there and, and I, I hope you guys can, can, Take that and and read a little into it and, and understand why it is I'm saying what I'm saying about oxalic acid. As always, like, share, subscribe, comment below with any questions you may have. And we'll look forward to next week in another video. Thank you.